right, all right. Okay, so hello and welcome if you're watching uh, to another Big Mish Movement session done on my Mondays, Mondays, Move Movement Mondays. And today is a very important session. I'm very, I'm trying, I'm trying not to be too overly excited because I don't want to like miss points, but it is, uh, I'm going to go over some very important concept. Whether you're an athlete, whether you're injured in pain or absolutely healthy, this is something that we all need to be good at. And it's actually probably a fundamental concept to my entire philosophy of, of how I construct a program, what I want a person to do, how I, what I want them to really be good at, which basically, which is why, again, why I'm doing today's workshop is because everybody needs to be good at this concept. I think more importantly though, people with back problems, people with disc issues, um, but even not even just limited to that actually, to be honest, people with thoracic outlet syndrome, people with uh, TMJ problems, all kinds, from sciatica all around. Basically, we all need to be good at this concept. The title, uh, let me get a drink on that note. <laughs> so basically, the title of today is Rib Cage Stacking. Rib Cage Stacking. Now, what does that mean? Is basically, we wanna be able to pull our ribs down. More importantly, we want to be able to get our rib cage somewhat on top of our pelvis. So this is why this is so important. Basically, we as humans are very good at the ladder, which is back extension, because that actually does signify forward progression, which is life. That's what life is, it's forward progression. So we move through back extension. Um, however, with that, back extension also signifies a lot of our go, our stress response, our sympathetic drive, neuro, sympathetic neural drive per se. So it's basically all this thing that goes hand in hand, it's very sort of symbolic almost, that back extension or overly back extension could mean a lot of things from a very kind of stress system or one that's sort of struggling to hold itself up. Um, Yes, the spine is designed that way. However, again, because we're talking about um, forward progression in this crazy chaotic life, uh, a life that a lot of our bodies aren't suited well enough to handle, this extension pattern gets way overdone and it becomes our main point of reference for any kind of difficult movement. So then when we do our squat, maybe a deadlift, maybe a bench press, um, anything, you name it, we could be driving with a lot of back extension. And what that actually does is basically it sends our system into a little bit more stress. You, you turn on a lot more of your back muscles to use the, uh, to drive that movement. You actually end up losing optimal positioning for your core to do its job. So that's why the subcategory of today would be finding your true core because if you don't know how to control the rib cage stack you don't have your true core almost done with the rambling and then we'll get into five uh, six exercises you can do you don't even have to do all of them at once with six exercises you can do to give your brain a reference of what it's like to stack your rib cage uh, because also like i said when you go into overly extension <clears throat> more stress more sympathetic tone more muscular tension you lose movement capabilities so while I'm saying that if you go into a max effort, you might use back extension to help you, that's great. But if that's overly, overly repeated over time, you're gonna feel the effects of that. Again, loss of range of motion from the arms to the hips everywhere. Uh, two, back problems, just overly using it. And uh, you know what, I could really go on, so let's just kind of stick to the topic of what, what are we, we ribcage stacking? So okay, we're overly driving this way, or let's turn your angle so you guys can see, we're overly driving this way. What does ribcage stacking mean? Well, that's exactly what it is, stacking. So here's what we need to know. We have our diaphragm right here. First of all, if it's overly extended, it's not in its best position to fire 
and do its job. Um, somewhat okay in terms of inhalation, but not very good for exhalation. So there's a theme to this. Okay. We also have our pelvic floor down there. Now, I'm actually not gonna get into pelvic floor exercises today. Um, that's actually something we need to be good at, but some people can be overly good at it, depending if they don't have this good um, relationship going on. So, what we're saying is we have the pelvic floor diaphragm. Basically, when we're overly extended, they're off symmetry position, they're out of alignment. By stacking the rib cage, you tend to align the two together. That will give you the best abdominal pressure throughout, in addition to giving you the best movement capabilities in terms of deep ranges into a squat, ranges with your arm. And so basically, it's a win-win. The point is, we're not good at it because we tend to be so good at the ladder. We tend to be so good at the driven, forward state, stress state. And one second while I um, just quickly fix my Instagram app because I don't know why. Um, sorry, I just put my screen lock on for some reason. There you go. Ah. All right, we're back. Now you can't cut out on me. I don't know why my phone is still very much glitching. It tends to just want to cut out. So, stacking the ribcage, we create the best abdominal pressure, best movement capabilities. It's a win-win-win. We're good at the ladder, which is extension, a little bit more stress, a little bit more tension. We lose movement capabilities. So that's why this is so important for everyone to sort of grasp and be conscious of as you do your movement training because I'm telling you, your subconscious pattern will take you into the extension pattern. And that's what leads to a lot of back tension, disc, disc degeneration, as well as other issues, like I said, resonating throughout the body because it is such a stress state. It's a go state. Stacking is a grounded, stopping state. Just think about that while we go, as we go through this. So, all right, so anyway. <laughs> Here we go, what are some things we can do? These are six exercises. These are some winners, uh, my go-tos. I do these all the time with my players, uh, but if you were my client, I'd be doing them all the time with you as well. These are warm-up go-tos. Uh, we should always be reminded of flexion and drawing the abs in and taking us out of that extension state. So now, one more thing before I start, one more thing, because I'm sure some people are actually thinking, well, hold on a second. If I'm sitting all day, aren't I flex all day? And um, let me, let's, let's just be, be clear, when we're uh, sitting, that's actually a state of rest. And by you sort of flexing, you're kind of just sort of jamming everything down. You're not really creating any good abdominal pressure or anything like that, okay? Um, so sitting, don't almost think of sitting because on, we have to think of conscious moving being. We are moving being. Even if your life requires you to sit a lot, you have to move to function. So when you move, uh, usually you'll go right into extension. So managing to control that is imperative, even if you sit and slouch all day. So don't confuse some of these anti-extension spinal flexion exercises as slouching exercises, because we're doing something completely different. Okay, so number one, this is something that you will have seen before, but it's the absolute winner and the absolute number one kind of goes. Get a block or a foam roller or some towels that you can put between your knees. You want to hook your feet onto a surface, ultimately a flat surface, but if you want, you can just put your feet up onto a bench. Okay, I'm using my chair right here because I can somewhat hook my feet in and my feet are also flat against a surface. Okay, we're going to take the block and squeeze it between the knees. I'm sure you've seen this before. Maybe, maybe not, okay? From here, your back should be flat on the floor and we're going to pelvic tilt, just lift your tailbone off the floor. So we're minimally lifting our hips. This is number one of stacking the rib cages. You have to control the hip position. So not up here because now you're actually gonna be driving into a little bit of that extension pattern. We want minimal pelvic tilt. So your lower back 
has to be on the floor. If it's coming off the floor, you're doing too much. Set your lower back on the floor. Good. Slight, slight uh, squeeze of the roll. You don't have to be tight. Okay. So, golden rule of breathing. You want to fill it up. Exhale all the way. You can exhale with a sigh. Or you can exhale blowing out the birthday cake. Whatever works, just get rid of everything. You're gonna go for about a five second exhale. Feel all that ribs, all those ribs drop. Hold for three. Big inhale. I like to put my hands on my ribs so they can kind of check that inhale expansion motion, exhale ribs drop motion. So here we go, we're gonna go five breaths with that rhythm. I'm gonna count it out for you. Inhale. Exhale for five. We're gonna hold for three. Inhale. Filling it up as much as you can. Exhale. Hold for. Inhale, fill it up. Exhale, get rid of everything and go for. Hold for. Fill it up, inhale, inhale, inhale. Your hamstring should be slightly fatiguing, but remember, you're not driving, lifting your hips up, so check that. Make sure your lower back's on the floor and you're just lifting your tailbone off the floor, giving you slight hamstring engagement. One last breath, inhale. Exhale, four. Hold, four. And fill it up one last time. Good, okay. So, if you've seen that before, if you've seen me do that many times, you have to understand that that's pretty much uh, the epitome of stacking because we've got hamstrings, powerful pullers of our pelvis to help kind of pull you into that posterior tilt, somewhat already aligning our pelvic floor muscles, or AKA the pelvic pelvic diaphragm underneath where our ribs are now dropping. Uh, we've got many things going on there and that's, trust me, that's putting your body in a very relaxed, down tone, down, down parasympathetic tone, so lowering, calming your nervous system down and while actually still turning on some powerful muscles, core and hamstrings, stabilizers of your pelvis, adductors, game changer. We need those and we need backs off. We want quads off. We want calves off. We want those things on. Can we do that and manage good deep breathing? Okay, so next one. Um, bear with me for this setup because ultimately you want a full size foam roller. I don't have a full size foam roller. So I can actually make, I, I can make do with, um, with this one, putting my head right here. Uh, I just want to make sure I angle myself in a way where you can uh, see me. So this is what we're going to do. Ultimately, you're going to lie down on the roller. <laughs> okay. Um, like I said, I have a short roller, but if you have a full size one, that's just, it's just going to work perfectly. Okay. So you're going to lie down. This is kind of this old school way. Uh, vertically spine along the roller. Make sure our arms are out to the side because we want these chests to be nice and open. Okay, so you feel this gap right here. We want to manage that. Okay, we want to pull our ribs down and flatten our spine, closing that gap. Do that with an exhale, try it right now. So you should already feel that's actually creating some good abdominal pressure, okay? Create that, there we go. So as we create that abdominal pressure, we're gonna now use that to help lift our knee up and back down. 
That's going to be a little bit of hip flexor working, but that's okay. We can, we can afford to have that guy work a little bit, but we want it to come with the pressure of our abs out of back extension. So start with the inhale, exhale, drop your ribs, create the pressure, lift your knee, lower it down, keep the gap closed. Good. Reset breath. Keep that gap closed as you breathe in. Exhale, lift the other knee. If you're having trouble, maybe you could put your fingers here to also give you a little bit of a guidance to push down. But most people should be able to feel that gap and you just want to keep that gap closed throughout. Exhale. Keep the gap closed as you lower. Good. Keep that pressure down there. Inhale. Maintain that pressure and lift the knee. Exhale. You ultimately want to exhale throughout the entire up and down. Save, save enough uh, air for that. That's what's going to keep you that pressure and maintain this stacked rib cage position. So here we go. Let's go uh, two more each side. Inhale, exhale throughout and lift the knee. Relax. Keep that pressure down. Inhale. Keep pressure and exhale. One more each side. I would say the downward part is more the focus. If you can maintain ribcage stacked as you lower your leg, you're going to be really uh, in a good first step to controlling this uh, abdominal pressure. So here we go. Exhale throughout, lift up and down. One more to the other side, inhale, keep the pressure. Exhale throughout, lift up and down. And that should be it. It's already starting to uh, burn a little bit for me because that is the fundamentals of what we wanna be doing right there controlling the ribs and that step one is lifting lifting and activating with the hip flexors and can you can you move can you move your legs while we maintain this okay and with that being said we're kind of going to go into the next progression of that uh doing it in a somewhat opposite fashion this one you'll actually it will be better if you have a band but it's not necessarily essential and here's why because with a band, you're gonna, it's gonna allow you to feel, we're gonna feel, it's gonna allow you to feel the pressure, whereas without, you kinda have to sort of um, create the pressure more on your own. But basically this time, this is what's called like a traditional exercise called dead bug, but conceptually stacking. So moving back here with the dead bug, what they do, Right here, lower back pin down to the floor. This is all flat. And we're gonna extend out this time. Bring in, extend out. Maintaining that, if you're arching, you don't have control of it, okay? So like I said, if you can get a band, I'm not, I'm not gonna use this one, but I'm looking for, this is one, okay. So the band, I'm just gonna pull right here. And that's giving me, as I'm pulling it, it's already kind of giving me that core pressure tension that I need. Then we're gonna lift our legs up. And so at this point, your lower back is pretty flat on the ground, but what I want you to make sure is that you keep it there. So arms just basically vertical. Check your lower back. There's a slight little exhale too to pressure it down, okay? And then I don't even want you to go legs straight. Keep your legs bent and heel tap the ground one at a time. So ready? Inhale. Keep the pressure on the floor and exhale up and down. I'm down and up. Reset. Inhale. Keep the pressure on the floor. 
Maintain that pressure. Exhale, down and up. Keep the pressure on the floor. Inhale. Exhale, down and up. Good. Keep the pressure as you inhale. Big, big inhale. Long exhale, down and up. And you really do not need to go leg straight until you master all the basics of this. So I'm going to go one more each side. Big inhale. Exhale. Keep the pressure down and up. Good. One last one. Inhale. Keep the pressure down and up. Very good. Ooh, okay, yes, I know that might have been a bit challenging, but hey, you need control of that. You need awareness of that. Your brain has to be able to have a, a powerful point of trust to do that as you go through these strenuous, stressful movements of life because you could just be picking something up or it could be an extra long walk or walking around if you did that day, a hike, your lift, something on the, out of the ordering that you're not prepared for. <sighs> Tuck the ribs down, exhale is how we want to go, all right? Um, I, that was a more difficult one, so trust me, if, you, if you're looking for something a little bit more passive, easier, I got a couple coming up, but we're like halfway through, and then uh, we, will be, we, will, we will be done. So this next one, I do have to just uh, change the camera angles. <sighs> Actually, I just gotta slide it over. So this next one is a bit of a stretch, a bit of a core activation, but it's also more importantly, rib cage stacking. Okay. Um, you want to go onto some. You want to go to somewhere where you can hold onto. Okay. You want to get your little block. Uh, something to squeeze in the knees again because when we're squeezing something between the knees we're activating adductors hopefully evenly on the inside your inner thighs so that's going to lock in your, your hips and give you some support hopefully get the quads to calm down and shut down a bit because they do tend to be a little overactive and then again we got pelvis control and we got a lower back stretch breathing filling up into our upper cavity dropping the ribs so this time the ribs will have to be dropped as you'll see so you're going to come to the object where you can hold on to, okay? Um, sorry, cats. All right, right here. Okay, this, uh, just squeeze something between your knees and you should be about, you know, shoulder width apart. The angle of that, there we go. All right, cool. So right here, this is what you got to do. You have to do it in this order so you get the right position. Okay, number one, slight little knee bend. Okay, just to get you out of a extension, slight so little knee bend. Number two, your belt buckle, your belly button, you want to lift that up to your face. If you're aware of a pelvic tilt, it's a posterior pelvic tilt, but we want to actually think of getting this up. Okay, so here, up. It does have to, it also happens to be a glute squeeze, but I don't want you to think of a forward thrust, just think of up. Okay, grab the thing that you're going to. Uh, pull, uh, pull back on and you're just going to sit back and allow all of this to stretch breathing into our upper back so big long exhale inhale feeling all those areas in the upper cavity long exhale go hold for three two one inhale Five seconds, exhale, go. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold for three, two, one. Inhale. And as we're getting through those cycles, your inhale should be getting bigger and you should be feeling a stretch in your upper back. Here we go, exhale, four. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold for three, Two, one, big inhale. And one last exhale for five, four, 
three, two, one, hold for three, two, one, big inhale. Good, Ooh. and now we have the hips and posterior chain starting to burn a little bit. Um, it's tough for me to obviously talk about everything going on because I'm already trying to like talk you through it. But make sure you check in those hips. Make sure you're not, if you have this pattern going on, you've lost it. It has to be hips forward and that's why they're gonna start burning as you're holding yourself there. Meanwhile, with the ribs being pulled down in position, we are going into an extreme flex position. That's fine because trust me, you need a little bit of reference for that. And as you'll feel, it's gonna be a lot of more ab pressure and that's what's gonna allow you to really feel your core work the way it needs to. You have to take your body into opposite extremes sometimes so that you can find your balance mutual because life tends to push us in an extreme. So we gotta take us into the other extreme sometimes to give your brain like, okay, where's my middle ground? As well as be able to give yourself a reference of how to do it differently. Because again, I've already broken down of why you're more advantageous of not being fully extension driven as you're going through your movement, but a little bit more exhale throughout the movement, dropping your ribs, okay? Almost there, okay? I got two more. Um, and again, I do have to rearrange you, but that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna take you guys to the wall. Okay, let's get in the view of my apartment. All right, again, you'll need your block. You'll need a wall, okay? Um, again, we're kind of taking this a little more functional. We're sort of taking you from the floor, first in a, on your back position to now on your feet, because you have to be able to master these concepts on your feet. We're upright beings. You're going to be challenged in this upright way, so which, is, which is why it's so important that we um, learn this, especially when we're standing. One last time, I say, sorry, a little amateur, but again, don't worry, this stuff is what's going to help you. So, squeeze that roller, okay? Same, same order, you got to go knee bend first, okay? Raise this all up, this is all engaged, and now we're going to go forearms up against the wall, right here. Putting your back into a stretch, putting your abs already into an engaged position. So, same sequence, we're gonna go five breaths in the same order. Big inhale, fill it up, feel the stretch. Doesn't matter how long you inhale for, just fill it up. Exhale, I say five seconds because I just want you to get rid of everything. So five, four, three, two, one. The pause, the three, two, one pause, it's first of all, not only helping ensure that you really are getting rid of everything in your lungs, but it's also helping a lot of this gas exchange and getting rid of uh, the, the, the waste and carbon dioxide that you don't want in your lung. Basically, we're just really just emptying it all out. That's gonna facilitate a bigger inhale. Hence the why we got this three steps of inhale, fill up, exhale, pause. So here we go. Remember, get up close to the wall. Number one, bend those knees. Get yourself out of extension, all right? Number two, get your belly button up to your face, your belt buckle, lift it up. Cool, lock it right there. Forearms, push them into the wall, great. So we're gonna inhale, feel this upper back area stretch. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Hold for three. Two, one, breathe in, stretch the upper back. Fill it all the way up. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Hold for three, two, one. Inhale, fill it all the way up. Check those hips, make sure you're pushing those hips forward. And exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Hold for three, two, one. One, breathe it in, fill it up. Last one, exhale, four, five. Check those hips, four, three, two, 
one, hold for three, two, one, inhale, fill it up. Good, and make sure as you're filling it up, you're not moving. It's gotta be a consistent pattern that you can hold it and be able to move up. And I mean, excuse me, be able to breathe all the way out and then fill it all the way in. It's so important. It's very important that we can do that because um, again, throughout our lives, we're gonna be extension driven and then we're gonna uh, basically just gonna, we're gonna be normally inclined to go into extension. Extension is more for inhalation and then we tend to just wanna to resort to that for our inhalation. Can you stay grounded and flexed for your inhalation and exhalation? Last thing that we're gonna do here is um, basically we're gonna try and go into our squat with maintaining this position. Now, it's, if it helps hold on to something, I'm not going to, but I'm just coming here just so that you guys can see. Um, I'm gonna go a few reps here. So make sure that we're, we're not gonna be super, super flexed, but somewhat tuck your rib cage. Keep your pelvis right here. All right, I'm gonna try and do my best to demonstrate. And take a big breath of air in. Feet should be a little bit wider, shoulder width, slightly out. But again, I think if, you, if you're struggling with a deep squat, just hold on to something and let's just work on the positioning right here. Okay, take a deep breath of air in. Exhale. Let those knees come forward slightly. Stay down here, breathe in. Exhale, drive your heels through the floor. Good. All right, we're gonna try that again. Here's what's important. Normally, when people squat, they're gonna do that. They're gonna really, it's gonna be more of a hinge. They're gonna lock their backs into extension. They're always gonna try and look up, which is a big mistake because if you um, if you if you end up extending your neck, you're gonna end up extending your back too somehow. So it's so important that you also look down, or as you're dropping, kind of just drop your head, just for the sake of learning this. Let's just say you're just trying to master this position. It's really important that we're gonna go through holding that position. Okay, as you're lifting weights. It's not necessarily that you have to do it this way, but it's also, again, gonna help really pressurize your abs and give you a little bit better movement capabilities and ultimately give you more strength. It just might be harder work. We tend to extend with our squat because it makes it easier because we're trying to drive forward progression, remember what I said in the beginning. However, if you wanna recruit good ab pressure, if you wanna keep it more balanced, and ultimately help you lift that weight with good, more balanced surrounding structural muscles. You gotta stack the rib cage. Let's say you're holding the weights here, but if not, you can hold on to something here or keep your arms in front. But let's just say for arguments right here, drop right here and drop. Exhale, three, two, one, hold, breathe in. Exhale, drive through the heels, pushing your hips forward, right there. Hopefully you can see what's going on right here. We're gonna do a couple more and then we'll be done. Okay, and then, like I said, this will be a short, short one today, but last, last rep right here. Again, hold on to something if you need to, but if not, challenge yourself. Just keep that tucked, keep that tucked. So here we go, right here, last one. Big breath in, okay? Let's say I'm holding the weight right here, or right here. Exhale, five, four, three, two. Elbows of the knees, one, hold it, breathe in. Exhale, drive through those heels. Three, two, one, hips forward. And there you go. Good, I'm actually sweating a lot. But there you go. There's six different things. Um, obviously, somewhat harder in intensity, but 
let's be fair. Let's fair. Let's be fair. You can't always run from the work, and these are things we need to be good at, great at. Excuse me, great at to handle a lot of the things thrown at thrown at us in life because we wanted our brain to refer to this good pressure, anti out of extension position as we go through some of our more extreme lifts or things that we face in life. Plus, don't forget what I said. This is a stopping, grounding state. Extension is a forward progression state. So give yourself that rest and reference of not being in extension all the time by learning these key uh, concepts, which are mainly centered around good exhalation, making sure that we're breathing out all the way, filling up without going into extension, because that is our natural tendency will be to do that. So hopefully you guys got something from this. Like I said, it doesn't matter who you are, you need to be great at this. And this is one of the most fundamental things that I do in all of my, with all of my athletes, because you have to manage that. If not, it's just gonna just fatigue at some point. So we, what, are, what and basically what, okay, so what do we, what, what do we do to manage it? This is basically it. It's just all breathing mechanics and different positional awarenesses. When you go into your lifts though, you want to be somewhat aware of that. Not necessarily forcing yourself to stay there, but more so synchronizing movements with exhalations and always making sure we tuck the rib as we exhale. All right, that's it. I'm gonna check your questions real quick, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and shoot me any comments. Please, please practice that and be great at that and keep on moving.